Hey guys, welcome to Melbourne High School E-League week number three. And today we have uh, Melbourne High School versus McKinnon Secondary College Team B. And it is going to be one hell of a match today, Tico. We appear to have a small bit of a technical issue. Um, so we are waiting on uh, it's 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 we are waiting on Tico just to join us here. But today, so we do have two teams which are quite strong. Melbourne High School Eagle have actually been on a stomping fest lately. And um, McKinnon Secondary College, I do believe they've been a, a pretty decent themselves as well. So we're about to see uh, these two teams go head to head as we just wait for uh the one, the only uh, Tico to join us. We are starting soon, guys, so just bear with us for a bit. So, <clears throat> one of the things that we should talk about, though, is the fact that we have so much chaos in the pick and bands and these uh, teams. We've got Chinese boosting strats of Tarek Gee, Kats Nunu, Braum Grace coming into pro play. And these are team comps that just absolutely decimate other teams. Uh, you get the Yi ahead and just like 1v9 with a Tarak ultimate. You can't kill him and he kills you but at the same time. It takes the Tarak ultimate to actually like disappear. Uh, you have the Karthus Nunu. There's so much damage but of course we do know uh, Scissors beats paper as uh, the Yi just shreds through that Karthus. Karthus who's just so paper thin. Still have yet to see the uh, Brom, uh, Brom Graves but I do believe that might have been pulled. As for the bot lane, Tico as an ADC main. What's the bot lane mean looking like lately? Well, bot lane. I do not like it this patch. This is a bot lane that nobody likes. We have the only two carries that we can we can play in this patch, Ezreal and Kaisa. What we've seen from SKT in Africa, they took a Yasuo Rakan bots bot lane against a Shen Darius bot lane. This is a patch that has really screwed or has really messed around with the meta. And I mean now that I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the uh, tournament rules now. But now that Pike has been out for two weeks, I will be expecting to see Pike in this game. Indeed, and Pike is such an amazing playmaker. In all honesty, um, and as for those who are asking about the um, uh, what these, what this Tarak Yi lane is, oh, Tarak Yi combo is, is pretty much you hyper farm a carry. So for example, you go Yi jungle and a Tarak mid, and you just give all the farm to the Yi. It's him with the Karthus. No, you give all the farm to Karthus. So one champion gets so far ahead that it's just completely irrelevant of everyone else because you're you're two to three levels up. You've got an item ahead, and you can just shred an entire team with the support you need because the other because the other champion doesn't need as much gold just to keep you relevant. So it's really just a it's it's pretty much just funneling farm into one particular uh, champion. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a boosting strat that nobody wants to come up against. But if someone does pull that out, if someone does play the Nunu Karthus, the best way, the best chance that you have against playing that is play play with the strength, play with the off lanes. And also another thing that I've, um, that you can also pull into these things is you could pick up something like the Malphite or the uh, Ramus even. Uh, to like You can pick up specific champions that counter these strats. So it's even though we've seen it once or twice, like one of the things that people are overstating is how effective it may be. Because at the end of the day, there are ways to go against it. If you get a hard shoving mid laner, you can literally just like take down that tower first before the Yi gets online. And so that gives the team a lot more gold than you should have and can actually keep you relevant with this incredible uh, with this hyper farmed oh, champion. Yeah. And we, we we've seen a lot of these boosting strategies. We've got what was it, Kale and Yi? And then there was Tarki, and now there's Nunu Karthus. These are all boosting strats that can be played around. That can be played around, as you said, as we both said. It's just not going to be easy if one of these teams do pick it. Indeed, and we are getting to the pick and bans right now. So uh, we are seeing the Zoe ban right off the bat. The poke, the annoyance, the seeming mobility, but actual immobility of this champion. How 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 are you feeling today, knowing that this is always off the rift? Paddle Star is gone! No! Oh, but there's one boosting strat disappeared. That's a Yi that has been taken away from Melbourne High. 
and the graves as well. How many boosting strats are we looking at so far? I'm expecting either a Karthus bat or something now, because this is... Oh no, it's the Vladimir. I'm a little bit disappointed, Brook, there. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be seeing the Vladimir bot side, but they still have a new Karthus up, and this is something that I will be very interested, interested to see, but we do have a Kaisar ban, one of the main 280 carries in this patch. Indeed, and Kaisa, with Kaisa being down, we are looking at like maybe an interesting bot lane, either an Ezreal Lucian or possibly we could see the Yasuo Alistair that some people have been trying to pull out lately. So we're going to see what happens this pick and ban. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And quick, uh, quick shout out to Quizaciously, because uh, he's uh, he's going to flash into a one v four. Just, just we're waiting on you, buddy. Yeah, we are waiting for you to pull out that awesome strat one v four quadra kill. But. We do have the Karthus ban. Pronome has locked in Ezreal. Mm. And with the Karthus ban, therefore that takes away all three Chinese boosters just that we did just mention. The Ezreal is a safe pick in that bot lane and really good scaling, really good early to mid and even late with the double tier build nowadays. So really good pick up there from Pronome. But what is it that we're expecting from Red Side now to pick up? Oh, he's got the hover on Lucian, but looks like he's going to go over to the Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath, safe pick, amazing assassin, tanky assassin late game with those thousand true damage ultimates. He can just one-shot the champions. Doesn't matter if Ezreal can arcane shift away. If Cho'Gath gets with near him once, he's gone. Yeah, you stack that Righteous Glory with Gargoyle Stoneplate as well as Elixir of Iron. He's going to be huge, and his ultimate true damage, as you said, is going to be massive. But looks like we also have a lock-in Jarvan 4. Now with the Jarvan 4 pick, you often see a lot of um, lot of uh, synergy that you can see with it. We haven't seen it in a long time because of all the nerfs that hit Jarvan late last year. But you do see a lot of these strats like the J4 Galio combo, like a heavy engage combo, which can be very good. They can force through with these heavy bruiser styles and, uh, and amazing engage that we have seen work to great extent. Simple pull up in the uh, pressure strats of split pushing, but has, is so effective. Oh, this is a bot lane that I do want to see. A Morgana Ezreal. Now, I did play with Pronome <laughs> last night. That was a bit of fun. But he is going to go for the Alistar. I'm going to talk about Pronome later. But there is a lock-in Alistar down bot lane with the Ezreal. Yep, and with the Alistar... Oh, we do have the Lucian as well. The two meta ADCs that are left that we did mention are actually up. So the Essence Raven the Lucian is so strong. Be able to keep the Lucian... Constantly spamming his abilities, getting those double shots, getting all that damage out. And uh, we are seeing uh, just the standard Aurelia ban with the uh, overpowered champion. But back into the Skarner Alistair pick. Skarner, great pick, uh, great pick champion, great controlling jungler. Alistair, amazing playmaker, so tanky as well. Yeah, this is going to be a bot lane that is going to be a problem to deal with, especially with an Alistar. If they do dis decide to dive the low bot lane, Lucian... I mean, during a laning phase, Lucian is not going to have the Essence Reaver anytime soon. And if he's going to build a proper Lucian, the proper, as my fellow casters like to say, Earth Lucian, he's going to have to get Essence Reaver before he can deal anything, before he can do much. And with our star, Ezreal, this bot lane is going to be hard to deal with. Well, one thing to look at is uh, the... On the side of McKinnon, they have actually banned out the Aurelia Renekton. So one of the things that a lot of people overlook is the fact that Cho'Gath's laning phase is weak. He has good sustain in lane, but he still has a weak laning phase. So it's all about getting him into that mid-game, getting him so he's equal, not that he's behind. Because if he falls behind, it's so far hard for him to get those stacks to get really big. So the Renekton Aurelia bans and allow him to just stay relevant in that oh. early game and then outscale. And we have a Soraka, ladies and gentlemen. Yes! Soraka, the one-horned, I'm not going to say beast because she's really a healer, isn't she? The one-horned, uh, uh, wouldn't, uni-horned, uni-horned, the uni-horned, the uni-horned rainbow, um, rainbow horse-hooved champion. <laughs> Okay, back on your <laughs> But we do have a Dr. Mundo that's been picked. So, lots of healing on both teams. <laughs> you, you've, lost, you've lost all right to an analyze after that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but of course, we do have the Dr. Mundo being picked. I do believe that McKinnon might just go for that Galio last pick because it does make sense with the follow-up on the J4. A lot oh. for amazing engage. But the Karma mid being picked up for voice, uh, for Kuzaciously, 
and um, it does appear it's going to be pretty standard. Nothing meta breaking right now, and we have to remember that in this patch, Banner of Command is gone. It is. It has disappeared. One eight point twelve, and it just it's gone. But we do have Twisted Fate or Yasuo. That's going to be a Twisted Fate lock in against a Karma. I believe it's Twisted Fate mid lane versus Karma. Correct me if I'm wrong. It does look like that. Unless they go for a breaking the meta bot lane, it doesn't really appear to be anything else. Because Skarner is definitely going jungle. Mundo, I do not see going anywhere but top lane in this thing. Unless you want to go to weird Karma top and a Mundo mid. But Mundo would just get bullied out by this Twisted Fate. So it's definitely Karma mid here. But it does appear that we are... It's. It does appear that it is actually going to be voice of voices in the mid lane. I was. I do apologize. Usually people load up in order of their uh, roles, but yeah, not in this case. Unfortunately not. No, but because this is, this is a high school league, not all the players have every single champion in their, on their account. So it's a bit of a problem when they want to swap the champions, but they can't. So they can't cho you know, choose and pick order. But that's not going to stop the game from going. This is, you can, you can readjust it now, and with the new changes to the uh, spectator client, you can uh, rearrange it in the bottom bar, and it'll just show up on the, on the sides as you rearranged it. But we're just going to wait for another three minutes, spectator delay, unfortunately. Indeed. And one of the things that I'm a little bit uh, coarse about inside of McKinnon is they've gone for the J4 with no massive follow-up engage. It's they've got like this massive AOE dive engage, and then they've got a Cho'Gath running up, TF running up, Lucian who can dash in, but you don't want him to dash into the front line. So it seems a bit, it seems a bit peculiar. Like they're going to be able to catch out someone really well with the Twisted Fate J4, uh, the Trigger with the True Damage Ultimate. But it does seem a bit, it does seem a bit weird to have this J4 um, with this massive engage unless they're looking for a massive early game jungle path and to get all the lanes ahead. So it's. It's going to be interesting, but the Karma, on the other hand, has taken the teleport to Master Twisted Fate Ultimate. Lost a bit of a early game harass and laning power for that global presence. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes as well. I mean, this bot lane is more... No, not bot lane, sorry. McKinnon are looking to be more of a single target pick sort of team comp. I mean, you do have the Jarvan, and the Cho'Gath. They have massive AoE abilities. Cho'Gath with the uh, Rupture, Jarvan with his Cataclysm. But with the Twisted Fate gold card, they can only lock in one champion. And if and once they do, everyone's going to collapse on that one champion. So I believe that Santa twice is going to be the key, the key champion or the key player in this game. Indeed, and... If you look at the side of uh, Melbourne High School, they've got the Mundo massive front line. They've got the Skarner for that pick potential. They've got the Alistair. They've got a massive tanky line and a lot of poke from the Karma Ezreal. Um, but one of the problems that they're going to have is the longer this game goes, that Karma damage is going to fall off. That Ezreal damage is, gonna, is, is not going to scale as well as something like the Lucian with the Essence Reaper. Um, and this Cho'Gath is going to keep on scaling. So Melbourne High School have to look to get ahead early and close this out before a late game comes. Otherwise, this Cho'Gath is going to be very hard without the same damage that they need to take him down. It's going to be so hard because Soraka is going to be healing him. Twisted Fate scales like a madman. Lucian in this new patch, I do believe, is extremely strong as well. So uh, late game goes to McKinnon, but early game, Melbourne High School have the tank line. They have the pick potential. They have the Ezreal. It's going to be hectic. It will be. And one thing to note on Prono is that he usually opts for the Triforce instead of the Iceborne Gauntlet. And in this case, I mean, it would be relatively smart until Cho'Gath gets gets um, the movement speed that he can to shut them down. Jarvan also has his flag and drag. So if Pronom gets locked in, he is going to die. Without that Iceborne Gauntlet, his preferred pick is Triforce. Without the Iceborne Gauntlet, he's going to be a bit... Uh, Squishy. Yeah. But but one of the things to you know is that Cho'Gath is true damage and the Ezreal Iceborne Gauntlet, like Triforce actually gives you a little bit of health, whereas Iceborne Gauntlet does not. Iceborne Gauntlet only gives you mana and armor and that spell blade and the cooldown reduction. So it actually doesn't help too much against the Cho'Gath, who is mainly magic damage. And sh it would help against the uh, against the J4, but that's why you have to use the Ezreal Arcane Shift just to make sure you should stay out of there. So it's either way, it's going to be hectic. We're going to see how it goes. We're loading into it now. And uh, hopefully we don't get bugs, but I have nightmares of that happening last night. Oh, sure, yeah. that's unfortunate. Yeah, you're playing a couple games. This uh, nooblet over here decides to uh, bug splat before he heads into game. But we've 
entered into the loading screen. I'm going to cut you off there. I am sorry, because I'm not going to hear any of it. <laughs> but we do have Predator on Skarner. Nothing um, different. I'll be honest, so I've been trialing uh, Cholgath Predator, and Tico can vouch for me. It is a scary thing to behold, but of course it does hurt your laning phase so much. You do need that Grasp and Dying in the Cholgath just to keep yourself healthy. Uh, especially against something like a Mundo who wants to go all in um, after, like, when he gets his ultimate. So Cho'Gath is definitely going to need to try and like stay healthy. And pretty much, he's he's. It's going to be very. It's going to be very interesting to see how this matchup goes between the Mundo and Cho'Gath because I don't. I've not seen this matchup for a long time. Yeah, I mean, Mundo has the early game poke. He's got the cleaver to be able to chunk down this Cho'Gath fairly easily. And I'm not sure if he's going to be able to sustain it. Cho'Gath won't be able to get in range quick enough to proc his grasp while Mundo can just cleaver, cleaver, continuously cleaver the Cho'Gath, bring down his health. The only thing that Cho'Gath has to keep him alive is his passive. Indeed, and also they're all in with the uh, Mundo when he pops his uh, ma uh, masochism, I believe it's called, um, is it does so, it gives him so much base AD. He just becomes an absolute monster. His cleavers do percentage health damage, just like um, Cho'Gath's E does, but it's just... It is definitely in favor of the Mundo early. And the Mundo, the, the one thing that Cho'Gath can do is maybe hide amongst the minions and just use the minions for the uh, sustain. Whereas the Mundo has a passive sustain in his kit as well as the ultimate at level 6. So Mundo is just going to be an absolute nightmare. Um, as for the um, as for the bot lane, we do have this Alistair Ezreal. Alistair has so much playmaking potential. As for the Lucian Soraka, they are a poke and sustain lane. Um, if the Alistair can get onto Soraka, he does have the Ignite, he does have the Aftershock, the Ezra's got a lot of poke, maybe they may just be able to kill off the Soraka, so the Soraka has to play very carefully here. Yeah, he does, and I mean, this bot lane, they both have a qu quite a bit of poke, we don't, well, actually, Ezreal will be the only one, Pronom will be the only one poking in this lane. Alistar is going to be in a dangerous position, he's going to have to go for the Relic Shield, as you can see, and he's gonna be a ha he's gonna have to step up to the wave, which is going to be easy poke for Lucian and Soraka. And before we get into this, I'm hoping against hope that we see suddenly a switch. We see Lucian top, we see the Cho'Gath bot lane with the Soraka, but of course, it's only the door and shield, so it's definitely Cho'Gath top. I'm a little bit disappointed. I was hopeful for about two seconds there. Yeah, and hope you can, but it will just never happen, unfortunately for you, Pro. But look at what Melbourne Secondary High are doing. They're just... Okay, they just walked into the tribush and walked away. I mean, yeah, okay. Dr. Yeah. Mundo is on call. Yeah, Dr. Mundo. Would you believe that Mundo is not actually a doctor? He just thinks he is. So, it's it's one of those things like it's... Yeah, I gotta think, like, what what kind of calls does he make with that phone? Who can he call, Who can he actually talk to? Mundo knows no ends because, oh my god, he has a briefcase. He has a briefcase! <laughs> okay, look. Um, <laughs> it's, not a a... it's not a cleave. Wait, no, his cleaver is his phone, isn't it? I know, I think it's a briefcase, isn't it? Or is it? I think you, it's a briefcase. You, you want to bet on that? What are we betting? Um, yeah. <laughs> I get bragging rights if it's his phone. You get bragging rights if it's your if it's if it's the briefcase. All right. Deal. All right. I'll be watching you. Ninety nine point nine five eight R. That's a weird name as well. I mean, yeah, especially because he's not going to get it. Uh, okay. Oh he no, no, he, he will. He will. <laughs> I believe in him. Just because he's playing League of Legends doesn't mean he's not focusing on his studies. I mean, he's in high school. He should be focusing on his studies, and he is because um, the school allows it, right? Yeah, it's, it's just completely like backed up by the school. And it's the briefcase! No! <laughs> and we, there we have it, the Mundo with the briefcase, and he's, oh. there's another briefcase. Do we want to watch that again? No, we don't. Briefcase? We don't. We do not want to see another briefcase. But, uh, I'm... Lucian is going for press the attack, so Lucian actually can do quite a lot of damage there. Um, when he gets that proc off, so they're all in. Oh, he goes oh, in, Alistar! He flashes on Chopper, and he's going down slowly. Ignite has been used. Press the attack has been procced on Quiz... A... Qu quiz... -a quiz... Quizaciously. 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 Alright. And like we said before, uh, the Quizaciously with the 1v... Oh, what? Flashed into the 1v2. Oh, he goes back in! He really wants to take down the Soraka. 
Indeed, and there we have it. Like, we have this really aggressive lane, and already bot lane has been won, because the, the Alistair or Ezreal have to play this aggressively, um, because the Soraka is going to be out sustained, especially with the star call. But of course, Ezreal needs to get this uh, the goal for that tier, because already we're seeing him struggle with this uh, mana issue that he's been having. Yeah, he is struggling with his mana. He's dealt quite a bit of poke, but they are, as you said, a sustain lane. And this, I mean, they're sustaining in health as well as mana, making sure they play it passive. Even with the all-in, they've taken the ignite and the flash away from Quisatius Lee as well. And all they're going to return is actually Chopper Reed's uh, flash. They have still got the flash, two flashes and an ignite. Oh, sorry, an ignite, a heal, and a flash on the side of um, McKinnon. So it does actually look like it might be an advantage to McKinnon now, because they have got the lane frozen where they want it to. So, uh, Melbourne High School is actually uh, pushed in quite hard now. Yeah, and Pronom has gone for the total biscuit, the biscuit of rejuvenation. So, that's going to be, was it boots? He's going to, instead of taking the boots, was it? It was the biscuits. I'm not completely sure on that. We'd have to check that out. But, of course, it's it does allow for that better sustain in lane with the mana and the health. Um, and uh, rest in peace to Total Biscuit, as you said before. It's it's a pity that we had to lose such a great person, but his memory of gaming uh, of gaming prowess lives on in all these youngsters as we see these them play today. Yeah, but look, we... <laughs> <laughs> you have totally got me, but there's a little bit of a quarrel going in on the top side jungle. Skarna did meet Ji Young, and in goes the top side. 99.95 ATAR is taking quite a bit of damage. Kuzaciously is going back in. Jinu, Ji Hoon is the target of this one now. Heal has been popped. The flash hasn't gone down, however, but Skarna's in the top side. Rupture does miss from Super, Super Snakes, man, as he does turn this one, uh, 1v2 around. And really well done there by the Alistair, being able to get out the uh, heal from the um, Lucian. And so much damage there as well. So now we can see the Lucian and the Soraka are both very low. And even in the top lane, even though Mund is winning in farm, he's actually um, he's actually quite low in health. So the Cho'Gath, when he gets 6, Mundo will have to be very careful about the uh, all-in potential of the Cho'Gath, especially if he's got enough mana for that ultimate, which does about 300 true damage at level 6. Yeah, the good thing about Cho'Gath is he's still got a health pot on him because of the amount of sustain that killing minions allows him to keep. He just doesn't need to... Oh, he just used a health pot. Anyway, but he is still... I mean, he's out trading 99.95 right now because of the sustain that he has in lane. Dorn, shield, health pots, passive. Indeed, and it's going like very well. Uh, it's going very well for them as well. But right there, that star call is going to heal up so much health for the Soraka. As I said before, this sustain lane. Unfortunately, the Alistair Ezreal are not pushing the lead they need, and the Lucian's actually ahead in farm right now. After all that has happened in this bot lane. Yeah, they focused a bit too much on fighting, and it just hasn't turned into their favor. Briefcase after briefcase hitting super snakes, but in comes Skarner, the dash away from Jihu, and as. They escaped from that one. Predator had been used. And also, the uh, because the Skyro did not have 6, didn't have the ultimate even, so there's no use uh, flashing for that to kidnap someone. Of course, that does that is one of the issues of the Skyro ganking. It's literally, I will run at you as fast as I can. And that's pretty much the brunt of it. So you have to get them in a bad position before you can gank that lane, which is uh, seems to be a bit of a miscommunication on the side of the Melbourne High School. So... One of the things to note with this game so far is unlike most games that we've cast in, this, in the high school E-League, this is actually a deathless game at, at almost seven minutes. Yeah, it's not a raffle stomp like we've seen for the past few times. Ambitious tries and quizaciously, but unfortunately, he's burnt some some um, summoner spells that don't that you don't want to burn at that point in the game without any deaths or an advantage going over to your side. He does have them back up now. Mm, indeed, and it does appear that it's just going to be... Oh, okay, so here's what we've got to think about. What is the game plan from here? Like, you have the double TP on the side of um, Melbourne High School. You've got the TP and the Twisted Fate Ultimate on the side of McKinnon. So, do they want to, they want to like, try and get into, like, a 1-3-1? One, one? Do they want to try and get into, like, a 1-4? A do they want to go into, like, team fights? Because both sides have decent... Oh, Quizantiously going in a really, really good play from Soraka. Stopping anything from happening... Indeed, and that was a really good silence, being able to stop the um, 
uh, will stop the uh, Alistair from doing too much more, but he had popped all of his abilities, so there wasn't really much that he could do. And they actually were able to get the Ignite out of the Alistair again, but they did get the Flash from the, um, from the Lucian. Yeah, Jihoon, not a summon spell you want to use, because look at where the Skarner is. He's level 5, almost level 6, and once he gets to level 6, just a lot of kidnapping. Speaking of Skarner, he is in the enemy jungle. Uh, indeed, and the J4 is coming up soon, but of course, it does look like the Cho'Gath might be going for the all-in onto the Mundo, but of course, it does appear that now it's just going to be a, like a little bit of a tap right there. Yeah, Cataclyst of Aeons has been picked up by Santa twice, however. What's that building into? So, Cataclyst of Aeons is kind of like a, is a given on uh, Twisted Fate, and it's after the Abyssal Mask uh, nerfs with the range, it's pretty much always built into the Rod of Ages, which is actually quite good in Twisted Fate, because Twisted Fate uh, actually scales really well and has an impact as the game goes on. So, it gives them the tankiness, gives them the mana regen, gives them sustain, and also gives them late game ability, uh, well, late game damage. So, I, I, I completely agree with it, especially with the Dark Seal Corrupting Body. He's going to be at odds to stay in this lane for days. Yeah, but Ji Hoon, he's trying to go on to 99.95. Good flash coming out from him. He's used his ulti as well. He's trying to escape from this one, but it's three members up top lane. If he wants to escape, he won't. However, his first blood goes over to Santa twice. And sad tired for the Cho'Gath. You're down 30 CS and you don't even get an assist on that one. So, but really well done with the global pressure from Santa twice and also the, um, uh, J4 being able to just go there, burn the flash, burn the ultimate, and then picked up the kill onto the uh, Mundo. So really well done. Yeah, and that's going to be first blood going over to Santa twice, putting them at a 7, 000, uh, 700 gold lead. Not, I mean, this is the smallest gold lead we've seen in the past few weeks. Yeah, smallest gold lead at 10 minutes, 100%. They are doing so Oh, uh, Predator has been using flashes onto the support. Soraka's going to go down as he gets bumped right back into Prono. And right there, that's the one they wanted. They got the Soraka, they got her out of there, headbutted her back into the, well, back into, like, danger. And right there, they've now got control of the bot side. They may just be able to go for the Drake here, but the J4 is here for the steal, so it might be a bit, might be a bit cautious about that one. Yeah, but he doesn't have any support. Jihoon, he's still farming down that bot side because they have put pressure on him with the minion waste. We do have Santa twice now rotating towards Dragon, but I don't think they're going to be able to contest this one. But during this entire time, we still have the bro lane up in the top side. Mono and Cho'Gath are literally just a, it's a wet noodle fight. Remember the top lane days of old where it's literally just tank v tank? None of this conquer stuff. It was just tanks. This is what this felt like. This is back season 3 meta, my friend. Yeah, it's definitely season 3 meta, especially with the changes to bot side. There is no meta. There is no meta. Sorry, oh, on. that's right. This is season 1 meta, my bad. Everything goes everywhere right now. Except for top lane. <laughs> top lane is the only one that stays how it is. Yeah, top lane is the only consistent lane right now. I mean, we do have standard picks in this game, but they're just trying to keep the meta as it was and not as it is. Indeed, and we do have like the, we even didn't, we were even going to get new toys for top lane in this patch, but they actually cancelled it, uh, so that didn't actually happen, so top lane is literally staying the same. Oh, 99.95 in danger now, he goes right back into Super Snakes as he dodges the rupture. He just uses ulti, he's not taking any damage, well he is, but he's healing it right back up. Jihoon flashes by 99.95, picks that one right back up. Voice of Voiceless tries to take down Super Snakes. He doesn't have any magic resist, so he's going to take quite a bit of chunk off that Cho'Gath. But he does have his ultimate coming back up soon, but there is a Skarner coming up here as well. So this might just be first tower in the top lane. Really good rotation there, where they're just able to get so much work done. And Twisted Fate cannot put enough pressure in mid to get tower in time. No, he can't. He's just one man pushing against three. Pronom dishing quite a bit of damage, but they're going to be able to take down this first turret top side. Really good macro rotations there, having the uh, combo roam up, having the Skarner up there at the same time as well. So they're able to get the tower. And now they're actually looking to go for a Rift Herald as well. So this is swung the gold lead right in their favor. It definitely has. They have Infernal Drake, so that's going to be a, a fight that they want to take. He does use Arcane Shift to get a bit of damage onto Jihoon. And in comes the Twisted Fate as well. He's going to be able to pick up Pronom as he goes down. Ultimate coming up from Crusaciously. Good flash as another G Young 
ultimate cataclysm does miss karma's down bot side as well as 99.95 atar they want to stop anything else from happening yeah, that was really well done, but in, during the meantime, they're actually able to pick up the Rift Herald as well. So even though they pick up the Ezreal, the Rift Herald went to the side of Melbourne High School. So it does actually work out in favor of Melbourne High School because that is pretty much a tower it's sitting in their back pocket right now. Yeah, it is. Now, where would they want to put it? Mid or bot side? Definitely mid because it opens up the map a lot more, but it can be harder to get those rotations going and making sure that mid is left unguarded for them. Because of the amount of damage that Rift Herald does, you can get so much more work on the towers, but it's so much easier to pop. So you have to accommodate it now so it doesn't actually get destroyed before you can actually do your work with it. Yeah, Super Snake, Super Snake Man is really not in control of this lane anymore. He is down in gold, and it's not... A lead. It's not a lead that he wants his enemy team, enemy laner to have. Indeed, and with the uh, with the Mundo, the Mundo can actually uh, run away with the game in the mid game, whereas the Cholga needs to scale a lot more and get those ultimate stacks up. And one of the things that people really overlook with Righteous Glory is it doesn't actually give you a lot of base stats. It's the active gives you so much mobility, but those base stats on it like are, are very lacking. And with the Mundo, who does a good mixed damage. That armor is not going to really do much against this Mundo's AP and AD damage. Skarner's in the bot side though, he's standing in that bush, you know, Scar, Scar, Skarner! Have you have you heard that one? The little, uh... This is uh, League of Legends, not Pokemon. No, I know, but it's, it's a little tribute to Pokemon that Skarner has. No. No, you haven't heard it. Just anyway, 99.95 is just going to walk up to G-Young, and he's going to use Blasting Token to get out into the Baron Pit. But, looking down this bot side, they're just pushing in. And with that Mundo in the enemy jungle, that just goes to show Mundo literally just goes where he pleases. He's, his ultimate allows him to heal up so much. He has the bomby cinder, so you stand around him. You've got the, uh, his, when his, his, if you stand around him, you've got the uh, burning agony. You've got his bomby cinder. You've got... oh, he can just stand near anybody, and there will be no nothing done to him while he's just depleting you. And Rift Herald has actually been dropped bot side with the Mundo coming in as well. Oh, they really want to get this kill. The flash coming out from Chopper Reed as well as an ultimate coming out from the Skarner as they pick up a turret as well as a support. And the Rift Herald is still alive, so maybe it's been a second uh, charge on this tower. Mundo is actually tanking right now. It's a... Oh, that was a good dodge by the Lucian, but it does pick up Super Snake Man. They might be able to take down the second tier turret. Oh. And the second tier tower is very low. They may they do the mini wave here, and the Mundo is really tanky. Mundo doesn't have the ultimate though, so he will have to be careful. Quizaciously going ham. Flash coming out from Jihoon. Ultimate coming out from TF. A good flash from Pronome to stop anything from happening with that rupture. But in comes to Sufain. He gold cards the Mundo. Mundo doesn't have ultimate yet. It's still with half of his timer left. Another arcane shift coming out from Pronom. He's trying to run away from this one. As I said, he's going for the Triforce, so he doesn't have the Icebawn Gauntlet slow that he needs to stop them from chasing him down. And in comes another... F oh! That doesn't hit. That was so close. Really good no! arcane shift there from um, Ezreal right there. And the Mundo was a lamb to the slaughter, allowing his, the rest of his team to get away. They did waste so much in that chase, though. A few flashes were burnt, a few ultimates, a few abilities. But they haven't actually got any, they have to get this tower or else they have lost two towers for nothing right here. During this entire time, the Kama is actually been, uh, getting pressure mid and getting a bit of chip tower of that as well. I wouldn't be surprised if they take this first tier turret, then rotate to the Ocean Drake that is now up. But of course, the rest of the team is actually coming.
no objectives to go for, however, as Baron isn't even up yet. They've got a minute and a half onto that one. They should start prepping for it. But look at the position McKinnon is in right now. They have two of their second tier turrets down. And also, the uh, Ezreal has actually picked up the Triforce and the uh, Mana Mune, I believe. They are, uh, yeah, so it's going to be quite interesting to see how this affects their next team fights because this Ezreal is going to be starting to hit like an absolute truck. And we're going to see whether the Ezreal goes for that second tier or just goes to the Blade of Their Own King. So, earlier Power Spike or a more late game map sustained um, Power Spike. So, it's. It's a question of where they go from here. Do they set up a Baron? Do they go try and get the last top tower? Do they try and go for an inhibitor tower? They've been winning the team fights, but they've got to look out for the Cho'Gath is going to start scaling up. But Cho'Gath's CS is... Cho'Gath is actually less than 5 CS per minute right now. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But I'm just going to fix something that we said before. Uh, Pronom does have his boots, so that means he didn't get Future's Market. He got the Total Biscuit of Rejuvenation. He didn't get Future's Market. I mean, that's something that... I usually pick up an Ezreal, but you know, extra gold. But that's 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 just that's just me. But we do have them trying to put pressure in the mid lane. While we do have Super Snake Man trying to put trying to deal with the wave up top lane, he doesn't have teleport, so that's a lot of global pressure gone. The reason why they normally go for that um the uh, future mark as well is because it's more consistent with um. It's the uh, futures market goal is more consistent with actually getting those leads. So one of the big issues with uh, coordinated play is oftentimes it's better to not give your opponent a lead than to get a small lead yourself because oftentimes so leads from your opponent can snowball out of control. It's more about like making sure that your team is ahead rather than like the other. Uh, your team is not uh, is equal rather than the other team being ahead, and that's that's one of the main things with our league. You're trying to go for those consistent, um, those consistent uh, high impact plays that can always get you a net gain rather than a risky play that might not well we do have chopper reed has picked up redemption so that's going to be a really that's going to be a team fight item that is going to help a lot if they do decide to take another team fight they're not in the position to take one though as they are getting pushed in this top tier turret a lot of poke coming out from melbourne high so they might not be able to contest this as 99.95 comes around the side but they do have pressure in what appears to be... Uh, the bot lane actually appears to be like pushing out for the side of McKinnon. So there is a timer on the Siege right here. But of course, with so much poke and with the Flash and the uh, Predator up on the... Um, uh, on the Scanner, this... Oh, he goes in inquisitiously! He gets a knock up on two members, Cataclysm on two of the enemy! G Young barely escapes, G uh, Ji Hoon barely escapes as well! Voice of Voices picks up a kill onto Super Snakes, man! As the Scarner is in dangerous territory, stuck between a turret and a Twisted Fate as he goes down as well. Indeed, and right there, McKinnon got the break they needed. They didn't get any gain, but they didn't lose anything. They're able to solve this game, and that is what you want. They're at 6,000 gold deficit, but a 6,000 gold deficit at 30 minutes is much better than one at 20 minutes. And that is all they need to do right now. They have the Cho'Gath, they have the Twisted Fate, they have the Soraka, they have that scaling. So, and that's what they need to get to. They need to get to the point where their carries and their champions are so are equal. But this Cho'Gath, 100 CS, 21 minutes, as opposed to the Mundo, 166, with two kills and four assists. This Mundo is huge right now. Yeah, Mundo is definitely big. We do have the Blade of the Ruined King that has been picked up by the Lucian. And the Mundo actually has a three thousand gold lead right now and this is massive the twisted fate is ahead as well by a thousand gold even though they're so far down this twisted fate is actually ahead of his counterpart 510 193 cs this twisted fate is saying guys hop on my backpack we are getting carried Oh, and 99.95 is getting tankier and tankier by the second. He's picked up the Spirit Visage, so when he does use his ultimate, he's going to stay alive for a while, as well as some Fire Cape. He's got the, I believe it's the Warden's Mail. He's got that as well to stop a lot of the damage. Look at, I mean, Ji Hoon and Ji Young are just not going to be able to deal as much damage as they want against 99.95 right now. Indeed, 99.95, as anyone who's played Mundo knows, you need Grievous Wounds now just to deal with the ultimate. It was before you used Grievous Wounds and you shut down Mundo, now it's you need it just to handle Mundo. So Mundo, especially when ahead, is an absolute nightmare to behold, and especially in something like this where you just have this beefy front line, it, there's nothing that even the Twisted Fate, who doesn't have to sustain damage, can do to him. 
Yeah, Santa twice isn't dealing any damage either. He's only got one magic resist item, but 99.95 is just taking the the brunt of Santa twice. And Santa twice, he can't really do much against this. He's got a gold card, but look, no damage. Indeed, and with especially with the masochism on the um on Mundo, he act gets so much extra magic resist every time it takes damage. Oh, and quizaciously he flashes, he bumps right him back into the into his ally Super Snakes, man. He really can't do anything. He gets rooted and he gets taken down by Prono. And there's might actually be a flame horizon by the Mundo in that top lane. He's got 192 CS right now and he's just continually keeping the Twisted Fate honest. This is really good from high, Melbourne High School Ely. Uh, sorry, Melbourne High School. They are not allowing the Twisted Fate to get any breathing room to make those global plays, and the Mundo is doing his job of just keeping their Fed member down. So that is all they need. The one Fed member can't do anything, otherwise they lose a tower. And that's actually really good macro play from Melbourne High School. Yeah, it's really well done, Quizaciously. He goes in again, Chopper in a really good silence as he stops Quizaciously from booting him right back into the enemy team. But Ultimate comes out from Skarner. He's gonna go down though as Santa twice picks up a kill. Turret goes down as Redemption comes in. Not quick enough. Alistar saying uh, quite a bit of damage. He's gonna knock up three members, but he's gonna go down. Double kill going over to Santa twice. They do pick up an inhib inhibitor turret though. And they lost two members to that, but at the end of the day, they it was worth it. They finally cracked open the base. They did get the ultimate out of the Twisted Fate. And this does mean that they are slowly inching forward. It's still only a six and a half thousand gold lead, but they might have just caught out the Twisted Fate and get onto him. Santa Twice is gonna be able to get back with his team. Super Snakes Man, he's tanky, but not tanky enough right now. Indeed, and uh, it's Super Snake Man, you're, it's uh, really sad to see this. The troll guy that's fallen behind, he still doesn't have his Warmogs when the Mundo has almost got his Randuin's Omen. And it is absolutely devastating. He's uh, going to get Flame Horizon by the Mundo. He's 4,000, uh, he's almost, he's 3,500 gold down on the Mundo. We do have the one saving grace so far has literally been the Twisted Fate. And his Twisted Fate is only about 1,500 gold up. This is absolutely disaster right now for McKinnon and they have this open inhibitor bot side they're pretty much always in fear of losing something does look like it's a Baron start as well they really do want to bait this one out G Young is around this Baron but voice of voiceless isn't with the rest of the team Santa twice doesn't have ultimate to join the fight anytime soon Jihoon is around the side, he's not with the rest of the team. Ultimate has been used on Cho'Gath, Super Snakes Man. He's gonna get taken down very quickly. Rupture does miss. Ji Young can't do anything about that. Pronome getting a bit greedy, he does use the ultimate. 99.95 had to pop the ultimate to keep the rest of the team away from their tank. And Super Snake Man is an amazing pickup right there because his ultimate does more than a thousand true damage to this Baron right now. And that is probably worth more than Jungler because he still had his flash, so he could have gone for the Baron Steel. But now they've only got the J4 for a potential Baron Steel. Oh, G Young is around the sides looking for something. Chopper Reed! Whoa! His voice of voiceless gets taken down with one empowered Q. At Absolutely one shot right there. Absolutely devastating from Voice of Voiceless. Oh, and of course, doing the Alistair just acquisitiously oh, goes in. Skarner picks up the Baron as Voice of Voiceless goes on a killing spree. The teleport has been used as they try and get towards this inhibitor. Karma's going down to apply some pressure down the spot side. Rupture does miss. 99.95 ATAR is now hacking away this turret. Jihoon just can't do anything right now. Press the attack has been procced. 99.95 is just saying, what What even is that rune? And of course, we saw right there that Alistair being a linebacker right there, keeping the J4 off his quarterback, being able to secure that Baron. No Baron still incoming. And now they've got all members up. They've got all members on Baron and... Oh, he goes in again. Chopper Reed, he, a really good silence is coming out from him as he stops squizaciously doing anything else with that one. But... I mean, it's not much McKinnon can do right now except for hold off. They do have scaling, but they need to be able to hold off to be able to scale. Indeed, and here we go. We do have uh, one inhibitor down in the ball lane. We have the inhibitor tower down in the middle. They are rotating for the top. They're just out rotating everywhere. The Karma can pretty much be on her own because she's so fast, does so much poke, and has so much damage. She does not need backup. She can just constantly apply pressure. Yeah. 
Yeah, she's got the Rabidon's Death Cat, Luden's Echo. She's got the Magic Wand. All this damage is just to help her stay alive and poke out the rest of the team. 9.95 takes no damage. I mean, I'm gonna keep saying this, but right now he is so far ahead. He literally is. He could probably finish the Rhino's Omen on the next back. And of course, he's just able to like, just tank everything he wants and just hit away this Hibiter. He's got no issues. His ultimate isn't up at the moment though, so it's very problematic if he does get caught. But, it's so much pressure and so much of his team behind him, they've got free reign of the map. Yeah, and McKinnon know they cannot take a fight. They're playing this smart. Wait it out. Even though they have two inhibitors down, they do have the wave clear to take it down to get rid of the massive waves that are stacking against their base. Essence Reaver has been picked up on Lucian as well. Essence Reaver and Blade of the Ruin King doesn't have anything to do with Mundo though. Indeed, and it's it's what you gotta do is you gotta get the executioners, you've gotta get um uh, Morello on the uh, Twisted Fate, you've gotta get somebody that can deal with the get some grievous wounds. And Mundo just taking the time. He's just diving under turret. That turret's gonna go down as Pronom takes it down. The Cataclysm has been used. Santa twice is in the midst of the fight. He's gonna back away from this. Get a gold card. Stun up the Karma. Ji Young is gonna get taken down by the massive tank as 99.95 goes on a killing spree. They're gonna be able to take down this inhibitor as well and maybe looking to push down this Nexus. And right there, we may just have the end of the game. Baron Buff is still up. And Ji Hoon, he goes down. Ji Hu? Ji Hu? Ji Hu! Santa twice gets taken down as the shutdown goes over to him, but after that he gets killed. And we oh. do have the uh, OP OP duel from J4 right there with the uh, 5 tier. Um, but Santa twice gets taken down twice. The Soraka vision score was 23 for that game, so he didn't actually do the wave. Uh, the, uh, work control you have, but it's a bit hard when you lose all control of the map, especially Soraka, who cannot face check any brushes. Perfect game from Melbourne High School, aside from the eight deaths. Got 11 towers, all three Drakes. They got the Baron, they got the Rift. Absolute devastation right there. Well, I mean, it's not a perfect game unless it's a perfect game. You can't say it's a perfect game besides the eight kills. That's not a perfect game. <laughs> bro, come on. Shh. Come on, bro. Hush, child. Hush. <laughs> Right there, it's it's we have the legendary five tier J4. It would have been amazing if it was a four tier J4 to be honest, but uh, you can't have any free thing. Why, um, why, why would it be amazing if it was just a four tier instead of a five tier? Javan four. <gasps> oh, good job, good job. But we do see that if we look at the po the post match, it's the Chogat didn't even have the Warmogs yet, didn't even have the uh giants built for it, had the other two components. Pronoun was already on his third item with an extra tier, had the Ionian Boots Lucidity as well. Um, we had the Scanner. Scanner was on two, almost three items. Uh, Quizaciously was even at three, uh, was at two items. He is so far ahead. Um, but yeah, guys, so that is the end of game one of today. Uh, we, we must bid adieu to Tico. I will be back shortly with a special guest color caster. Uh, coming in, we will announce that when we come back. But guys, uh, absolute pleasure being with you guys today, and we will see you soon. We'll be back in like probably about half an hour, you say? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, guys. Seven o'clock, um, Australian Eastern Standard Time. So that's about an hour and five minutes from now. Yeah, guys. So hope to hear from you soon. We shall be back shortly.